Hello, my name is Dan Quintana, and for this podcast, I am getting meta because I am sharing how to create your very own podcast. Now, I think podcasts are an excellent medium to share your interests and ideas, primarily because they're very easy to consume and they save people time. You can listen to podcasts while you're doing other stuff, uh, like walking to work, like washing the dishes, um, or commuting, or doing whatever. And uh, I also prefer podcasts to blogging because they take less time because all you, all you need to do is just talk. Uh, so first a quick explanation of how podcasts actually work and this is assuming that you have an audio file ready to go which I'm going to get into soon but essentially you host audio files on a server and you include some standard information with each episode such as the title and the description which is often called show notes. Um, and then you send this, um, uh, this RSS feed to a podcast directory like Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. Um, a lot of people think that Apple actually hosts the podcast, but they don't. They work as a directory so that people can actually find podcasts. And uh, Google works in much the same way as do the other podcast directories. Now, when it comes to the practicalities, um, if there's one thing that you should spend at least a little bit of money on, it's a microphone. Of course, you could record using your desktop's microphone or your phone microphone um, or the headphones that come with most smartphones, but the sound quality will tend to be poor. I think you're going to have to you're going to have to have something really interesting to say for people to put up with poor audio quality um, week in, week out. So it is worth investing in a good microphone. Um, there's a fantastic microphone guide that was, that's been published and is continually updated by uh, Marco Arment, who is actually the co-founder of Tumblr, um, believe it or not. And he has a fantastic podcast microphone guide, which suits a range of budgets. Um, but if you're just getting started, um, it's most convenient to get a USB microphone because you just plug it in. There's much less hassle there. Um, the other major type of microphone that you can use is an XLR microphone, um, which actually requires an XLR interface that you plug the microphone into, and then this interface plugs into your computer via USB. Um, the benefit with XLR mics is they're typically built um, a bit a bit stronger. Um, they're designed typically to be used on music, uh, for, for musicians and on stage, so they can get dropped a fair bit. Um, they last a very long time. And uh, generally, they have uh, better quality, uh, better quality sound, um, but not by much. Um, but uh, if you're just getting started out, um, I'd recommend going with the USB microphone. Um, but a really good microphone to get started out is uh, called the Audio Technica ATR Two One Thousand. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but uh, the great thing about this mic is it uses both USB, so you can plug it in, and also XLR if you want to upgrade your sound in the future. And uh, this retails for about $40 US. So it's a really good deal if you want to get started with your podcasting. Now, the next thing that you're going to need is a pair of headphones. And your headphones perform three functions. Firstly, it's to hear your co-host and any guests you may have on your podcast, um, uh, which is important, obviously. Um, secondly, it is to hear yourself. Um, it's important to be able to hear yourself to make sure that um, you're not talking too loudly into the microphone um, and that you're not making too many p -p plosive sounds. You can't really hear that much because I have my pop filter on my microphone. Um, and um, it just, it, it's a way to actually make sure, to, to, to make sure that your voice is sounding okay. Um, and thirdly, to make sure that your microphone doesn't pick up your guest's audio. If you weren't using headphones and you were just using your desktop um, speakers, then your microphone would actually pick up not only your voice, but also the voice of your guests and your co-hosts, which is a pain to edit afterwards. Um, so with headphones, um, you can actually hear your guests and make sure that your own microphone doesn't pick up what your guests are saying. Um, now, um, there's a num number of different microphones that you can get. Um, obviously, you can use some cheap ones, um, but the problem with the cheap ones is quite often they bleed a little bit of the audio. So your microphone will still actually pick it up a bit, um, so if you can, um, you can get some over-the-ear over the ear microphones that actually block the noise coming out, um, or you can get some in-ear headphones, which actually also block the noise coming out as well. But there's a, there's a range of, um, of budgets that you can, uh, that, uh, there's a range of microphones that suit any budget. Um, so check it out. Um, now, when it comes to the actual podcast recording, um, if you are on a Mac, 
you can use the free QuickTime software to record. You plug in the USB microphone and then you select that USB microphone and you click record. It's as easy as that. If you are on a Windows computer, you can also use Audacity to record for free. And that is how you can record your files. Uh, alternatively, you can get a dedicated audio recorder where you plug in your microphone directly. Um, I actually use the Zoom H6 recorder uh, where I can plug in my XLR microphone directly and that records straight onto uh, an SD card which saves all the files. So that's another option there, which is really handy if you are recording podcasts out in the field and you don't have access to your laptop. Now, when it comes to podcast hosting, like I mentioned before, uh, iTunes doesn't actually host your podcast. You need to host your files somewhere. Um, and there are several options available for hosting. Um, there's a, a Fireside, which is what I use for Everything Hurts. Um, that's a really, really good solution um, because as well as actually hosting your podcast, it also gives you a really nice looking website as well um, where, where people can get directed to for more information about your podcast. Um, that I believe is around 17 or 19 or $20 a month. And I think that's good value for money. Um, but there's a few different options out there, some which are a little bit cheaper, but may not necessarily give you the swanky looking website. Um, the Acast is another option. I host some of my podcasts there as well. Um, and uh, SoundCloud, you can host your podcast there. Um, there is a free tier where if you upload a certain amount, I believe it's an hour or two hours or three hours a month, um, it's free. So that's a good option if you want to get started. And finally, there's also Anchor, which is a new service, which is completely free um, and has a really nice interface as well. So that is also worth checking out if you want to get started with podcast hosting. But uh, I would recommend either Fireside um, or Acast. Those are, really, those are two services that I recommend because I use them and they work quite well. Now, when it comes to podcast editing, there are a few things you need to do to edit, uh, to, to do with your audio uh, to improve your experience for your listeners. Uh, the first one is to get rid of background hums. And there are various sources for these hums, um, including laptop fans, air conditioning, or any other appliance uh, or lighting that can emit hums. Uh, and you want to get rid of that. Um, you also want to get, get rid of mouth clicks. These um, smacking noises <laughs> are not nice to the ears. Um, so you want to get rid of those as well. Also lip smacks too. Uh, finally, uh, well, not finally, but additionally, there's also plosives. Um, those hard like p, p, p and, and B noises um, you want to get rid of too. Um, there's also audio clipping. So if you're speaking too loudly into the microphone, then your audio will clip and there are ways to remove that. Um, you also want to have a consistent volume. This is both in terms of within your recording to make sure that within a given episode that the volume stays relatively similar, um, but also in terms of uh, compared to other podcasts, there are actually volume standards when it comes to podcast recordings um, to make sure that podcasts actually have the same sort of volume from podcast to podcast. Now, the most effective solution um, to do all this is to use a service called Orphonic. Uh, and all these things are going to get uh, put in the show notes. Um, Orphonic um, takes care of most of these issues. With Orphonic, you can reduce background hums. Um, you can also deal with audio clipping and a consistent volume, both within your actual episode, but also compared to other podcasts, as you can actually do the podcast standard loudness. Um, with this, you can use up to two hours a month of audio processing for free, um, up to nine hours for $11 a month, um, or you can purchase an unlimited personal license for $89. Uh, the cool thing with Orphonic is that um, fans or listeners can also donate um, credits or hours that you can put towards editing as well. So that's really nice. Um, if you want to upgrade your editing, uh, another great solution is Isotope, the Isotope RX software. Um, you can do all those things, but um, with Isotope, you can also get rid of um, mouth clicks very easily um, and also get rid of the plosives um, as, well as, um, uh, as well as dealing with those background hums and volume and consistency. Um, that's a couple of hundred dollars. I haven't checked recently, but it's a couple of hundred dollars. So if you do want to upgrade, that is a good solution. But if you're just getting started, um, I'd recommend going with Orphonic as you can deal with um, most of the major issues when it comes to... Um, to, to your audio. Now, with your podcast, you probably want to interview some guests, and you can do that 
using uh, video conferencing software like Skype or Google Hangouts, and then you um, ask your guests to actually record the audio on their end. Um, now, of course, it's also possible to record their audio on your end as well uh, when using Skype, but the risk there is that if Skype drops out, then their audio is also going to drop out. Whereas if they're recording audio on their end, um, the audio is going to be consistent. Uh, so I would recommend actually asking your guests to record audio. And uh, I think with, with Everything Hurts, we've had at least 20 or 30, about, about 20, 20 or so guests, and um, none of them have had any issues whatsoever with recording their own audio. That has all gone fine. So as long as you give them um, uh, pretty clear instructions on how to do that, that is a good solution. If you want to actually record uh, video uh, of, of, of your podcast, um, you can record it either using your phone um, or um, you can use uh, OBS software, which is free and which actually uses the webcam and microphone um, on your computer, or you can use the microphone that you, you're recording your podcast on. Um, or if you're on a Mac, you can use Ecamm, which is what I've used for um, a lot of recordings as well. Um, it has a lot of handy features. And you can also do live video podcasts and people can tweet in or send Facebook messages um, uh, as part of your broadcast. It's really cool. You should check it out. I think they have a, um, a, a free trial period, but it's a nice piece of software. Um, now, when it comes to episode frequency, uh, your listeners will appreciate regular episodes. So I'd recommend to do your best to have a schedule and uh, to note your schedule on your website or your social media profiles. And the schedule is up to you, but I think a month between episodes is probably the longest you want to go. Um, if you could do more, that's fantastic, but I think a month is a really good start. Uh, finally, it's, um, it's, it's really important to be sharing your podcast on social media. Uh, it's very difficult. There's a lot of podcasts out there, so it's very difficult to just put your podcast out there on the iTunes directory and hope people are going to listen to it. Um, now, of course, you can share your link um, a, a link to the podcast episode um, uh, directly on Twitter or on Facebook. Um, but there's, a, there's one way that you can actually up your game when it comes to sharing your podcast, and that is using a, a free service called, uh, called Headliner. And what you can do with Headliner is you can take a short clip from your podcast, um, and then it will automatically um, take the clip, it'll create um, an audio wave. So when you're sharing a video, you can actually share a little video on Twitter or on Facebook, and people can see the audio wave, and then you can either add uh, an image from your podcast, be it with, of your guest or your podcast logo, and on top of that, it will automatically transcribe uh, the audio and create closed captions or create subtitles for the little video. And these look fantastic, and the accuracy of the transcription is about 90%, I would say. So you do need to go through and double check and make a few little corrections. So what Headliner does is it creates this little video um, I think the I think the limit is, is is ten minutes, but you don't want to be doing it longer than two minutes because two minutes thirty is the um, the Twitter limit. Um, so you can create little a little one minute video clip um, which includes the audio wave, so people can see at a glance that you're actually sharing audio. But on top of that, a lot of people don't actually like listening uh, to to stuff when they're scrolling through social media. Maybe they don't have their headphones and they're on public transport, but they can still actually see the preview because the words are coming up um, below. And this, this is a free service. It's one of those things that I can't believe it's free, but it is free and, uh, and it works really well for sharing your podcast on social media. Um, now, before I finish, I want to cover uh, a few typical um, uh, points of hesitation that people have when it comes to starting podcasts. Um, the first one is uh, I hate my voice. Um, yeah, that's going to happen. And I still do <laughs> when I hear my own voice, but there's no way around that. Your voice is always going to sound different than what you think it sounds like when you hear it back when it's recorded, um, that's just something you're just going to have to get over um, and uh, no one likes their own voice. <laughs> so join the club. Um, the second uh, common objection I get is, oh, well, my, my research or my idea is too niche. Uh, but I, I don't think there's an idea that's too niche. You're always going to have an audience out there um, who, who actually want to listen to what you have to say uh, about your topic of expertise. So don't let the, 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 the potential nicheness, that's a word, um, of your topic scare you away from doing a podcast. Um, and, and finally, it's this idea of like, well, I'm, I'm not going to start off with, with any listeners, but the reality is every single podcast starts with no listeners. Um, so everyone has to start with start from somewhere. 
and uh, it, it just takes a lot of consistency. Um, I, I read a statistic that most podcasts, um, uh, the, the majority of podcasts don't get beyond 10 or 8 or 9 or 10 podcast episodes. So if you can get beyond that threshold, you are well on your way. Um, and it's just important to be, to be consistent with, um, with, with your episodes, um, but at least make the goal of getting to 10. So I hope that has helped you. Um, if you have any other questions when it comes to podcasting, please let me know. You can, uh, best way to contact me is over Twitter at DS Quintana.